Hey Adventures, Jacob here from Local Adventure and today we're going to be talking about the best cheap vlogging camera. Now this is a lot of cameras to check out all in one video so we're going to break it up into a few different videos and check them out based on categories. That way you can kind of compare them apples to apples. We're going to be looking at some action cams, camcorders, larger cameras, but mostly compact cameras and break them down based on price. Now when I say cheap I know that's kind of relative but all of these cameras are under $500. In these reviews we're not going to really talk about the technical aspects of of the cameras or the specs of them, but really talk about how does it feel? What is it like to use? And then give you side-by-side -side comparisons of the footage right out of camera so that you can decide for yourself what you like the best. Now, I'm sure you've heard it before, but the best camera is the camera that you have with you. We get the question all the time, what's the best camera I should buy? And my first question is always, what's your budget? Usually I suggest writing down what you wanna accomplish with the camera. Some people only wanna do photos. Some people wanna do video and photos. Other people only wanna focus on video. Then compare the cameras that fit within your budget and see which one fits your needs the best. So with that said, let's get started. Today we're going to check out the mid-range compact cameras, which is anywhere between $300 and $400. The cheapest of the three, which comes in at $368, is the Sony Cybershot DSC-HX80. At $379 is the Olympus Tough TG6. And right at the top of that limit, at $399, we have the Canon PowerShot SX740HS. Starting off with the Sony, inside the box you get the camera, you have the battery, which I've already charged and put inside. You you have the charger itself and you have a lanyard and of course all the instructions. Some quick specs, it shoots at 1080 at 60 frames per second, so good enough for YouTube and it gives you that slow motion which is about half the speed. Is this getting old yet? I mean, is this getting old yet? I don't know what my face does that in slow-mo. It shoots 29 minutes uninterrupted and the lens is from 24 millimeters to 720 millimeters. Unlike the cheaper cameras we were looking at, this actually has a flip screen. Ta-da! So now if I am vlogging and I want to see myself, I can see it right there. Quick pro tip, if you are vlogging, don't look at yourself much. You can totally tell when your eyes are not looking directly into the camera right at the viewer. And a lot of times the tendency is to look at yourself because that's what you see and you want to make sure you're in frame. But usually I try to just glance at it every so often to make sure that it's all set. Otherwise I try to stay engaged with the camera. There is a viewfinder on this, which is really cool. You just flip it up and it turns the camera on. You do have to flip it out as well. Otherwise it's not activated. And then when I look inside, I can see everything. It just switches directly into that viewfinder mode. The advantage of having the viewfinder is when you're outside and it's super bright and the screen's just something that you can't see well enough, at least you have the option to look right into there and you can see the picture and the, the exposure and everything a lot better. There's also a built-in flash that pops up, boom. The menu itself is pretty nice. I have a more expensive Sony point and shoot that I use when I need slow-mo stuff and everything's accessible right at your thumb right here. In terms of size, it's pretty standard for a compact camera. It's, you know, small, small-ish. It'll fit in my pocket. You could tell it's in my pocket, but it fits in there. Um, more so, it's just convenient and easy to grab. I do like that the grip has a little protrusion right here so that you can get a really good grip on it. Otherwise, you know, it, it feels good in my hands. Again, my hands are a little bit smaller, so if you have massive hands, it may feel a little bit small, uh, but for me, it, it fits really nicely. Next up, let's talk about the Olympus. Inside the box, you have the camera, you have the battery, you have the charger, which comes like this, and you have a nice lanyard that matches bright red. Something that caught my eye is that it shows you some additional options and accessories that you can get for this camera. It looks like there's housing for if you really want to take it deep in the water. Uh, there's also a few different lens adapters and converters that you can screw onto the front of it. So this camera shoots at 1080, 60 frames a second, just like the Sony does. But if you want, it also shoots 4K at 30 frames a second. In case you missed the last video or you just happened to watch this video itself, 1080 is pretty much standard for what you would watch on YouTube. In terms of frames per second, 30 is typically like a normal speed that you would be seeing, and 60 frames would allow you to shoot slow-mo. Now, if you're doing 4K, that is a very large image. So if this is a 1080 image, 4K is like this big. The advantage of that is that you can take a 4K image and zoom in and not lose the quality of it if you're editing at 1080. But editing 4K can be really cumbersome. I edit on a laptop and when I'm trying to do any 4K footage, I can hear the computer really working hard and I have a hard time just rendering it to even see what I'm doing. The camera shoots 30 minutes uninterrupted and the lens is 28 millimeters to 128 millimeters. 
so not nearly as zoomed in or as far reaching as the Sony. Camera shoots 29 minutes uninterrupted and the lens is 25 millimeters to 100 millimeters, which is a lot less than these other two cameras. On the plus side, it is waterproof up to 15 meters, which is about 50 feet, and it is shockproof, which means you should be able to, to drop it and rough it up for a little bit up to seven feet, which is about 2.1 meters. There is no microphone input on this, and unfortunately, there's no flip screen, meaning you're gonna have to look at it just from the back, and if you're shooting yourself, you're gonna kinda have to guess. And like the Panasonic Lumix we checked out the other day, if these doors are unlocked, there's a red indicator telling you be sure to lock it before you take it underwater. Now in comparison to the Sony, it's about the same size. It's a tad bit bigger, the Olympus. And I'll show you in pocket again. You can see it's there. Black pants are probably the best thing for you to see, but you can tell it's there. It fits, it's comfortable, uh, but I would still probably throw it in an additional bag. Next up is the Canon. Inside the box, you have the camera, you have the battery, you have an external charger. I like these better because if I buy an extra battery, I can charge this one while I'm still using the camera as opposed to plugging the camera directly into the wall. And you have the lanyard and all the instructions. Now I got the camera in silver. It comes in black as well, as you can see on the box. I just wanted to check it out what it's like to see if I would like it or not. I don't know that I like it that much. I probably would get black if I were to buy it. All right, let's quickly talk some specs on this Canon. Just like the other two cameras, it shoots at 1080 at 60 frames per second. So we're talking good enough for YouTube, half speed slow-mo. And this one, like the Olympus, also shoots 4K at 30 frames per second. You can shoot 30 minutes uninterrupted on this camera and the lens is 24 millimeters to 960 millimeters, which gives you the furthest zoom of these three cameras. Unfortunately, like the other two, there is no microphone input. So you have to use either the onboard microphone or do something similar to what I'm doing and use a lav, which actually connects right to your phone. Pretty nice setup. You have a nice large back screen and yeah, it flips, loving the flip. That way I can see myself, I can tell that I'm in focus, I can move it as I need or make sure, oh, I want the cat in the background. There's the cat. It does have a pop-up flash, boom. And I really like the grip that it gives you up front. It's this nice, really sticky rubber and it gives you a thumb grip in the back as well with access to everything that you need on your menu. In comparison, it is bigger than the Sony, but about the same size as the Olympus, although a little bit fatter. This is what it looks like in a pocket. Again, I'm wearing sweatpants. I should probably put jeans on so it's a little more familiar to everybody. You can still see it's there. I would probably carry it in another bag, but I could throw it in my pocket if I need it. All right, now the fun part, let's take all three of these out and compare them side by side. I'm gonna shoot all three of these at 1080 so you can compare them apples to apples, and I'm gonna leave them at whatever automatic movie setting that they have. All right guys, so we are gonna be testing this on the side of the street. It's a nice day out. I've already gotten some weird looks from people at the park, but I'm gonna stay six feet away from them. Uh, regardless, we are gonna be at the side of the street because there's a lot of street noise here, a lot of cars, something that you'd probably run into regularly. Right now it's nice because I can look at the Canon and the Sony and tell if I am in frame or not. The Olympus, I'm not sure. I know it's a little crooked. I'm doing my best. Uh, so we're gonna test this out. I'm just gonna keep talking so you can hear the audio on each of these cameras and decide which one you like better. Um, and right now the sun is directly on my face so that you can see what the exposure is like that. Now if I turn around, now I'm very backlit. It might take a minute for it to adjust, but you will be able to see how it handles when there is sun behind me and not so much light on my face. Now a lot of that you can control when you're shooting and depending on where you go to shoot. But regardless, I just wanna give you what it's like right out of camera if you don't have control over your situation. Okay, does that look good? I'm gonna keep walking back now. I don't know why I kept walking backwards that way, but see, there's a lot of noise. So after this, this is kind of the good noise test. You could test the mics. It's not so windy today, so I don't know that we'll get a test of that, but I will test the zoom next and we'll see how far these cameras can zoom in. We're just gonna find a point out there and try to zoom all cameras in on the same spot. There is a patch of grass stuff that's growing out of the water. We're just gonna zoom in on that because I keep trying to zoom in on live animals and they keep moving. Let's test these out going up the stairs. I'm gonna to try to go up a little bit quicker to see what it looks like. Uh, there are some people on here, so I'm gonna wait a quick second. 
And here we go. Looks like on the stabilization as well. All right, we're gonna test the cameras now on some B-roll. We're just gonna shoot some tighter footage and just some stuff that I would use to fill in, probably with some music over it, kind of like this. So here's low light with these three cameras. Again, we're shooting this in my bathroom, so you can hear also an echoey sound. I only have one bedroom light on, uh, so it's a little bit harder to see. I will try with a little bit more light in a second. Uh, there is some front facing right there. And that's a little more light, still relatively dark. Uh, it's just whatever light is flooding in from outside, as you can see. That's where the light's coming from. And that's what you get for the lower light coverage. Okay, now that you've had the footage to compare, I'll give you my opinion on which one I would pick. When it comes to water activities, I don't do much of it. So to me, I don't need something like the Olympus. And plus I try not to drop my camera in the first place. So the shockproof stuff doesn't really matter. I like these two better because they both zoom a lot further if I need it. And plus you have the flip screen so that I can see myself. I would just save the $30 and go with the Sony. Part of the reason is because I like the size of it. I would go with something small just because if I'm going with a point and shoot, every little bit counts. Plus, I like the viewfinder so that when it is really bright out, I have the option to make sure that my picture is exactly how I want it. Thanks for watching. If you want to read more details on the cameras or pick one up, be sure to click on the links below. Special thanks to B&H for lending us these cameras to check them out. Also, if you have any further questions, they have amazing experts there. Lastly, I've linked to our blog post, which is comparing all the cameras that we're checking out in this entire series. Thanks guys, see you later.